Thank you. Um, welcome to this new session of uh, Thought. Um, today we're going to talk uh, about uh, Argo workflow metrics and actually how do we um, integrate all these metrics in something that uh, is useful for us to have an overview of what is happening in a system that is uh, complex as Thought. As you know, Thought uh, architecture, or you might know uh, now, is made by several components. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, all of them uh, run correctly, that they provide the results correctly, so that they just not uh, work uh, as implemented, but also that they uh, provide the results in good time and uh, um, in a way that uh, the user will be satisfied. And uh, recently, we uh, well, recently we moved to Argo uh, quite some time now. But uh, we were, we wanted to introduce a new uh, feature, which is the metrics. Uh, so since uh, version 2.7, Argo is able to create these uh, custom metrics. Before that, they were already exposed by the workflow, con workflow controller, but uh, they were uh, basically difficult to, to uh, scrape. And the results were not that uh, precise. But now with the new, uh, this new feature in Argo, we basically were able to introduce uh, some specific metric. Here I show you one example of what we introduced. Specifically, what we want to know about the workflows, which are the services that create the results for us uh, and for, us, for, for the users, is basically knowing if they are always running successfully and if they are taking uh, how much time or um, if we have to change something to make them faster or all the things that um, help us uh, monitor the system in terms of uh, quality and lot uh, latency, but also let us uh, prioritize what we are going to decide if uh, something needs to be changed or some new uh, architecture or technology needs to be uh, introduced, for example. And this is done at the workflow level, but can be done also at the workflow task level. So, sorry. Uh, that's it. So we can do it uh, both at the workflow level and the workflow task. So as we, as uh, the workflows are made by different tasks, this allow us to make sure that, for example, advisor, which is one of the most important component in thought or the most important one, is uh, acting always successfully. But uh, the workflow, for example, can fail because there are other tasks. So we know indeed that uh, advisor is the one that uh, is acting correctly. So we can focus on the other tasks that maybe are failing for some other reason. And uh, all of this has been uh, basically, first of all, uh, uh, added to the workflow controller. Now is able to create these uh, um, metrics. And uh, now we are able to see them in Grafana. So this is, uh, for example, the test environment. But let's look at the uh, middle tier. Uh, now you can see that uh, all the workflows that are running, and we can see the status of this workflow. So if they are succeeded, failed, or in error state, and this is, can be seen also for the task, as you see, if they are running, failed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the other thing that I just show is the uh, latency one. So we create uh, uh, histograms. So we set some limits in terms of time, and we see in which of this bucket the workflow uh, will fall in. And in this way, we can basically monitor uh, everything that is happening in these workflows. Um, to move ahead, this is the operational part. And then we want to, uh, let's say, create uh, service level indicators, uh, service level objectives, so we can decide uh, what are our priorities. And to do that, we rechanged some of the things. So as you know, the component that creates uh, our reports related to service level indicators and service level objective is SLO reporter. And SLO reporter, as of now, is structured in uh, a way that uh, we receive a report where we can see the amount of knowledge that TOT uh, has learned every day and uh, what is still needs to learn respect to the, for example, what is in the outside world for Python. Um, then we can see 
all the uh, integrations that are running. This is something that we introduced also recently, so we can see who is using TOT and which integration is uh, used the most, so we can prioritize new features for or improving some of the integrations. And then we have a more uh, operational thing, but also something that helps us see what is happening in our services. So as I said, what I just introduced, the latency and the quality of the workflows. And all of this uh, is summarized in our superset dashboard. So this is uh, an overview of what is happening in the um, stage environment. This is something that we already introduced before, that we had already. So what is happening in the Python world, what we are having inside the TOT knowledge graph, how fast we are learning. Um, this is for the solved packages, but recently we introduced also the security one. So now we can see how many, how fast we are learning in terms of uh, uh, security analyzed and also the number of packages that we learn every day. Uh, the integrations, so we can see the percentage of uh, uh, integration that are used by our users, either human or bots, and uh, what is happening uh, every day, and in general, the trend. So what is that most of the user of Tot are using? For example, in this case, it's shown the GitHub app. Um, then we have uh, Kebeshet. Uh, well, Kebeshet, we already talked about that. We know how many users have installed our bot. Uh, here we can see the, what is happening from the user API point of view. And if it's always uh, providing a, a successful request. And then we have what we, what I talked today. So the new um, metrics and SLI. So now we can see each of the workflow that are running and see how the percentage of the percentage of successful workflows that we have for all the different uh, uh, work, type of workflow we have. So now we have an overview of what is uh, basically failing most of the time or what is uh, working correctly most of the time. Um, this, as I said, is done at workflow level, but also at the workflow task level. Uh, currently, all the advisors here uh, means that we are not running other workflows, I guess. And the last thing, as I said, is the latency. So now we can see, uh, as I said, there are these buckets which are made in seconds. So each of these buckets show how long the duration of the workflow was and in which bucket it fall in. And from this basically heat maps, we can see the percentage of uh, workflow and the duration of this workflow. So if you start from the top, basically you see that 92% of the workflow, for example, of Kebeshet takes less than 900 seconds. And then you see lower, lower, lower until you see that we don't have any workflow that run less than 10 seconds, for example. But this could be set maybe in the future for something that we might want to change or if something is needs to be prioritized, for example. And this is done for all the workflow we have, basically. And last but not least, this was already introduced, but basically here we see what uh, advisor justification we provide to the users. So we can see if something needs to be changed or if uh, we are going to create new ad uh, advice for the users. And I think that's it. If you have any question, please uh, let me know. I only forgot question. to say that uh, uh, just that we'll run it every day. So every day you will have an overview of what is happening and we send it out every week. Now we can send it back because we stopped it for a while, but now from this week we can have it back. Cool. Um, so uh, not a question, but uh, a comment. Um, everybody take five minutes or 10 minutes um, uh, every week have a look at that and uh, challenge uh, all that stuff, right? Um, so I I have a pretty simple idea on my mind. Um, if I'm talking about a service level objective, um, I want to see that all the Kebeshet answers uh, get delivered 
whatever it is, all the cabbage header answers get delivered in whatever seconds and that they are uh, basically uh, positive. So if cabbage is doing some um, some update, for example, of dependencies, um, there should be a certain delay and a certain uh, or latency, uh, we call it latency, and a certain quality to it. Right, so if I ask Kebeshet to update my stuff, it should open a pull request within whatever amount of time. We're going to see what a good value is here for, for the objective. Um, and uh, we want that uh, pull request to be merged, obviously, because either CI was happy with it or a human being was happy with it. So uh, challenge that. Um, think about the stuff that you're doing. Think about the dashboard that Francesco just showed and think about is it valuable to us or not? We, we've put a lot of um, effort into uh, aggregating all these uh, information. So um, would be perfect if they are valuable information to, to us. Uh, from my point of view, most of the, the um, values shown give us some insights. Um, if you think about that uh, pie chart, which integrations are using uh, our services, our main channel um, seems to be uh, GitHub. That is good. So let's uh, think about or think more about how we can enhance uh, that GitHub channel. Um, so challenge it. Um, think about the diagram that you see or the numbers that you th see and raise questions if you have. Cool. Other uh, comments, other questions? Nice. Uh, thanks, Francesco. I'm going to hit the record Thank button you. again. Thanks.